In this video, we're going to talk about how we can use group policies in order to perform software installation on the various computers in our organization. It's a quick and easy way to be able to get software deployed out through your entire organization, has a lot of power and flexibility, and it's a great place to go if you don't have some of the more advanced systems administration and configuration management tools such as SCCM or other configuration management tools. So let's go ahead and take a look into this. So in order to do this, what we do is we open up Group Policy Management Editor. I've already got it in here. I'm going to create a new group policy. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and right click, create new GPO in this domain and link it here. In this example, I'm going to install 7-Zip. 7-Zip, uh, it's a free tool that you can download that allows you to both uh, compress and decompress files. And because I'm going to do that, I'm going to actually name this group policy Deploy 7-Zip. Okay. With that done, let's go ahead and open that up. Sorry, let's edit that. And there's two different ways I can deploy this software. First off is I can deploy it to the computer. So under policies, software settings, and then software installation, I can right click and say new package. And I can deploy it to the computer and therefore all the computers that get this group policy will get this software. Uh, yeah, we'll actually come back to that here in a second. The other option is to under user configuration, software settings, installation, I can then deploy the package here. The difference here is in one, I'm deploying it to the computer and the other, I'm deploying it to the user. Now the user has a few, little bit more flexibility than the user does or than the computer does simply because the user might be moving from computer to computer. By deploying it to the user, then that means we are deploying software for whichever computer that user may be on. As opposed to deploying it on a computer, which might mean that one, we're either deploying it to everybody or we're possibly deploying it uh, to a subset of computers that are single or limited use. Now, in order to do this, uh, what we need to do first is we actually need to set up a file share. So I'm gonna go onto my C drive. And this is kind of a quick and dirty way to do it. You wouldn't want to do this on the C drive. You'd want to, or, or on your domain controller. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new folder here. And we'll just call this a software. Under software, I'm going to then say share it. Let's go ahead and specify specific people. And I'm just going to say everyone. There we go. Everybody can have read access to this. That's good. And then in the software share, I have my 7-zip MSI file that I'm gonna drop in there. Uh, it's really important at this case for this to be an MSI file or a Windows installer package. It, it contains some functionality as an MSI that allows for the software install to work properly. Okay, so that's gone ahead, that's shared on the software share. Um, very briefly, if I look into the computer configuration, new package, I can't just point this to the C drive. I can't just say, yes, on this PC, go to the C drive, software, and 7-zip. It has to be on a network share. And this specifically tells me, hey, this, this doesn't look like a network share. Are you sure this is where you want it to be? So I'm gonna say no and then go back in, new package. And for the full file name, I'm gonna start off with backslash backslash DC1 backslash software. And now that I'm on my network share, now I can see the file. And now the install will begin, or the install options will allow, allow me to start. Under the deployment method, we'll notice here that we have an option here published, which is grayed out. Published means something is available for somebody to install, but not necessarily required. Uh, they can install it if they so desire. Assigned means it will be installed automatically, and then advanced allows you to specify some additional options. Very briefly, I'm just gonna go ahead and say next, or say okay, and I'll see, yeah, it loaded right up. If I right click on this and I go into properties, I can see some more advanced settings, uh, such as under deployment, there's my published, which is grayed out. Um, I do have an option to uninstall the software 
if it falls out of management. Uh, in this case, if it's a computer, if you're in the GPO, you get the policy, you get the software. If it moves out of the GPO, then the software gets uninstalled. Uh, advanced. Uh, there is possibilities to do some upgrades on here. So if you have an older version that you've then upgraded, uh, this allows it to be a little bit more intelligent and auto upgrade for you. You can specify categories under add or remove programs on the computer. Uh, let's see, modifications. You can install what's called an MST or a Microsoft transform file. And then various security. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing under user configuration. Let's see, I'm still out on the network, so I'll go ahead and select that. I see now that publish is an option, so it can now be optional to the end user. And I'll go ahead and I'll choose that. Uh, let's look at the settings, see how they've changed. Deployment, auto install by file extension type. Uh, this could be useful, say, if this is Microsoft Office uh, and somebody sees a docx file. Uh, if they receive a docx file in their email or some other application, once they open that, then that will automatically kick off this install process and will install the application on their computer. Uh, uninstall, so if the, uh, in this case, is deployed to a user, a user logs into a computer and it installs the software. They log off the computer and it uninstalls the software. And then do not, do not display an ad review programs. I'm gonna actually leave that blank. Uh, user install options, basic or maximum. I'll leave that as maximum. And then these are the upgrades, categories, modifications. Those are all the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and I'm gonna close this group policy editor and confirm, yes, it is deployed to my domain. So now if I jump onto my second machine here, of which I am logged in currently as a test user. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a command prompt and run this as an admin. And then I'm gonna run gp update slash force just to get the latest update of the group policies. Now, first glance, we're not gonna necessarily see anything happening here. In theory, if I receive a 7z file, uh, I should now begin to automatically install the sevens of the program. What I'm gonna do in order to show how exactly how this works, however, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna open up the control panel. Uh, under control panel, I'm gonna say get programs. And here we see my sevens of program that I just configured in group policy. Go and click on that and say install and it begins the install process. Now I could have chose to use the, uh, the, the minimum install screen there, as well as included a transform file to allow it to go quicker and easier. In this case, that was an example, so I made it as basic as possible. At this point, I now have seven zip. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I now have 7-zip on my computer. Um, yeah, somewhere. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've installed one program. I, as we saw in the GPOs, I could now uninstall that. I could upgrade that. I could deploy multiple other programs. I can have it go to the user or the computer or both, depending on my needs.